G'day guys, here's the here's a video, a short video that I'm going to do on Chromium. Just, um, I did mention it in a recent uh, chat with Bart K. So I thought about, you know, maybe it's an interesting topic to some people in the carnival community. Um, just to get an idea of uh, how they can utilise this mineral and have them in their diet um, and sort of mix it up a bit. So we'll just get into it. Um, what, what the usefulness of this mineral is that what it does is it upregulates the GLUT4 receptor, which makes it um, easy for the cell to, you know, to take in more vitamin C um, with it from within the diet. So if people, you know, I mean, got concerns about vitamin C or whether they're they are absorbing enough out of their diet, their carnivore diet, or you know, there's, you know, there there are ways of actually increasing the upregulation of the GLUT4 receptor to actually take it. Obviously, also, if people are doing keto and uh, um, are doing some level of carbs, um, you know, upregulating the GLUT4 receptor will also mean that the resident time of any glucose will be reduced which means that they'll have better absorption, which means, you know, if they're trying to maximise um, ketosis or ketone bodies within the system um, and there's less resonant time of uh, the glucose that they've ingested, you know, um, this mineral has its usefulness in that regard. Um, generally speaking, um, the, requir the chromium requirements on a carnival diet are actually much lower than they are um, compared to, you know, a you know, high carbohydrate diet. Um, you know, it's actually been shown that um, you know, supplementing with chromium, if you've got diabetes 2 or um, you're on a high carbohydrate diet, can be useful um, in the sense that um, you can absorb um, you can absorb more of the actual glucose into the cell, um, reduce the amount of insulin, um, you know, sort of spiking and uh, things of that sort. I mean, a lot of the actual foods, that, um, high carb, um, the sort of carbohydrate foods are sort of probably the not the best sources, but probably the only, probably the only ones that, you know, are sort of useful in that regard is probably um, the you know prunes from you know which is probably more the most bioavailable um, sort of uh, plant-based source if you were looking at it from you know if you were doing a mixed macro if you diet a high um, uh, a sort of a Mediterranean type diet or one of the others you could use those I mean traditionally the, um, they've been popular with um, as uh, something to eat um, in the Middle East and in uh, parts of uh, the Mediterranean, including Greece. So um, never been something that I've really enjoyed that much, you know, just, but, uh, you know, each, to each their own. So I'll just actually show you some of the actual nutritional requirements for different groups of people, plus um, the sort of, uh, you know, the different sources uh, both animal and plant-based um, sources. Um, obviously, for for us carnivores, you know, we'll be focusing on the um, sources from within the animal um, kingdom. Uh, I'll just bring this this up. Now we can actually see that uh, you know it's not the muscles that Bart was actually um, talking about. He was trying to poke a bit of fun at me when I actually brought this. Uh, when I was discussing this issue about chromium, uh, you know, I mean, we, you know, we enjoy having a bit of fun with each other. That's fine. But uh, mussels, um, as a seafood, is one of the highest sources, as you can see. Um, and uh, oysters is the next one, and that's one of my favourites. As people that have followed me on um, chatting with Bart probably know quite well that oysters are a favourite food of mine. Um, that I try and include in my diet, and uh, you know, and shrimps as well. So I, I get plenty of 
um, plenty of chromium, um, so I sort of, uh, you know, I'll probably get more than I actually require um, in the diet from the foods that I eat, so, because I, I do include quite a bit of seafood in my diet, um, not only, um, I, I mean, I know I tend to have a slightly um, more dairy focus to some extent, but not, but I, you know, it's sort of a balance between muscle meat, some dairy products, and uh, some seafood products is the sort of style that I do, which gives me greater variety um, and makes the food interesting. So, I mean, I don't think I could do muscle meats every day, but then again, you know, if it's you know if that's what you you're into, you know, you want to do the old um, um, steak and eggs type approach. Yeah, there's plenty there. As you can see, just five eggs will basically give you pretty much all your requirements for the day, um, let alone if you had a, um, uh, some beef or you know pork or whatever, you'll get more than enough that you require. So it's quite easy with animal-based products to get um, sufficient amounts of the, this uh, mineral. At the same time, you don't have the, all the anti-nutrients in vegetables, the chelating factors which actually reduce the bioavailability. So you know, so we can we can get quite enough on our diet. Uh, most people that eat large amounts of beef, they'll get plenty, um, especially since their requirements are much lower um, compared to um, somebody on a high carbohydrate diet. So in that in that regard, it's far less of an issue. But it's interesting to sort of uh, you know for people that are focused or may have any concerns about vitamin C uh, on a carnival diet. They could utilise this, um, you know, quite magical um, mineral to basically increase the sort of the uptake, the cell uptake of vitamin C um, in their animal um, foods that they consume. So the yeah, easiest way is to sort of uh, um, combine eggs and beef and uh, pork. That's the easiest way, but if other people are want to be a bit more adventurous like myself and add a certain seafoods, they can, you know, take that to the next level. But uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, probably the only thing on a plant-based side, which would be dates, you know, um, that where the other sort of sources would have low because they've got anti-nutrients that, that have greater, um, less availability. But dates um, being a fruit, um, has less of those issues, so that's probably the the best source for somebody doing a high carbohydrate diet. I suspect that's one reason why dates have been popular in the Middle East and the Mediterranean for a very long time. But you know they're not around. They're not bioavailable. They're not around. You know all year round. Um, they can be expensive. Um, there's issues with their quality. Um, you know so you know there's there's a lot of um, those, but if you find, you know, if you're into you know, that sort of dietary approach, um, that's probably your best bet. But for us carnivores, you know, it's the focus on some of the seafoods and uh, um, pork, um, eggs, beef, you know, is the, the go-to foods for us. Um, most of us will probably get more than enough, but it's more just to allay concerns that people may have that they're not getting enough chromium in their diet to basically upregulate those GLUT4 receptors and increase the, their uptake of vitamin C um, in their on their carnival diet. So that's pretty much it. Um, the source is a German source, um, you know. So, and the other source is from the National Institute of Health, which shows the sort of the RDIs now. These RDIs are definitely um, determined by people on a high carbohydrate diet so you know for carnivores it's pro probably far less probably half that is more than enough so just having some of these foods will we you know we will definitely um, hit our nutritional requirements very easily um, if people have any concerns as I said earlier you know they can focus on some of the seafood that uh, may allay those issues for them. So that's about it. It was just a short little 
video just to basically cover um, uh, this uh, mineral that uh, people may want to maximise in their diet for whatever reason. Um, uh, that uh, you know, uh, primarily for people that uh, may have concerns in regards to you know getting enough vitamin C in their diet. You know, so it's uh, it seems every time um, you know I want to either a chat um, either a chat with someone or um, I notice, uh, you know, on general social media, on uh, some of the carnival sites, there's, there's this constant discussion about vitamin C. So, you know, it's just basically another element that we can throw out there and say, look, we get sufficient chromium in our diet, and uh, you know, and the low requirements of vitamin C that we have, um, you know, for you know some of the some of the sort of the collagen side um uh, you know we get enough of the key collagen um enzyme regulating um vitamins which is retinol um d3 and mk4 the the animal form of um vitamin k2 which acts in a similar way in a whole um at like hormones sort of effect similar to to basically um, vitamin D3 but also has another element to it it also has the ability to penetrate soft tissue and um, uh, you know remove calcium from soft tissue so it can have a benefit in actually reducing calcification throughout the body where matto and uh, the other type of metaquinones don't have a similar capability so but that's a, another conversation for another time. Anyway, um, good night, guys. Um, I better finish off here and get to bed. See yous.